I'm from a biographical note, like when did your family come from Iraq and Tunisia? 1950. And they were like, I'm very familiar with the Ashka normative story of Jewish oppression. My all my grandparents are Holocaust survivors. Mm -hmm. Michael's all, all American. He's got no street cred at all. But <laughs> um, all Holocaust survivors, Poland, Belarus. So, and, and I feel like the, you know, the Ashkenazi community has done a very good job at keeping that story alive. And, you know, we've had pop culture stuff about it, uh, Holocaust movies that tell the stories of survivors. And I'm familiar with that in the Sephardi community. I'm recently learning about it more now in the Mizrahi world of like what happened there, because I feel like it doesn't get a lot of doesn't get nearly as much attention, but it's certainly there in terms of uh, you know, now we talk about it in the context of Israel. So can you shed light on that? Like, how did your family end up having to leave those countries? Yeah, well, the Holocaust didn't just happen in Europe. My mm -hmm. family from my father's side in Tunisia, they worked in forced labor camps of the Nazis. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, the Vichy regime, the French Vichy regime, which was the Nazi regime, uh -huh. uh, took over North Africa. Um, my grandfather and my grandmother were given food, like they were working in this forced labor camp feeding um, Nazi officers. My grandfather was supposed to be sent to a death camp in, in Europe, but um, the war ended before, so mm -hmm. he was saved. And when, yeah, sorry? No, that's like Casablanca, that movie. Yeah. That's like, well, that's the area, right? Towards yeah. the end of the yeah. war, they were expanding into North Africa yeah. and occupying yeah. the, the, the aggression from the Nazi regime was expanding. That was sort of in the mid, like mid-1940s? Yeah, right? whenever I see uh, photographs of Nazis in the desert, I get very uneasy. It's very, <laughs> it's very scary. Yeah. yeah. No yeah they're getting so sunburned. <laughs> too um <laughs> wait so, so yeah so you're yeah so your your grandparents were there yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and the forced labor camp a forced labor camp supposed to be sent to death camp and when the nazis left when the war was over um my grandparents were hoping that the tunisians would stop with hating them and yeah it, they didn't mm -hmm. uh, they destroy the jewish quarter in tunis they um restrict any uh, jewish associations um and that was in the 40s um completely um dismantled the rabbinical council in tunisia made life impossible for jews in tunisia there mm -hmm. were 105,000 jews there 104 or um thousand of them or even more mm -hmm. uh, were forced to leave uh, my grandparents got on a boat and sailed to Israel. by the nazis by the tunisians, by the tunisians. Uh, the post post nazi post regime there was oppression and, and okay. anti-Semitism of Jews and discrimination of Jews in Tunisia. In Tunisia. And in wow. Iraq. My grandparents from my mother's side were, yeah. um, uh, were living in Baghdad, which was two-third Jewish majority. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a Jewish town. Uh, and as the war started, um, Nazi agents came to Iraq and convinced the the government, the, the king, to hate the Jews more right. than they were, and just to take, I mean, just to take actions against them. And in 1941, it was like Juden, Yahud, Juden, Yahud, same thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. we agree. <laughs> yeah, and and really everything changed for them in 1941 in June, where uh, in Shavuot, uh, there's two days of pogroms against the Jews of Iraq, where hundreds of Jews were killed, thousands were uh, uh, attacked, uh, stores synagogues, everything was burned. Um, they call it the Kristallnacht of, of Iraq. Mm. It was known as the Farhud, which in Arabic means violent disposition. Mm. Uh, and that was the time that the Iraqi Jewish community knew that it was about to be over for them. Mm -hmm. And in 1950, the king gave an, um, uh, an order that uh, Jews are allowed to give up the Iraqi citizenship if they want to move to Israel. Mm -hmm. So that was basically encouraging them to, wow. to leave. Um, so they left everything behind. Came. They actually had one suitcase that they brought to the airport, but then they had to get rid of that suitcase too because of um, the Iraqi officers there. Um, so they came to Israel Confiscated with nothing. Confiscated it. They had literally nothing. Yeah, came to Israel with nothing. And, mm -hmm. and the only thing they had was the stories, the culture, mm -hmm. and that is even under attack today in the West when people tell me that my food that my grandmother has been cooking for so long and it's our ancestors... Palestinian. <laughs> yes. But y your food must have been amazing growing up. Yeah, it's still amazing. <laughs> in, in the house, Tunisian, and I mean, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah the food yeah. is amazing. But I'm not, so, I'm not supposed to eat it anymore. Cause, oh, because uh, it's cultural appropriation. Exactly. Oh, yeah. It's not, I mean, it's the only thing that my grandparents had. Like, the <laughs> only thing that they brought. They took everything from us, and now they're taking this away. But there's the plastic bag of turmeric and zakar, <laughs> and she's like, I stuck it through. <laughs> 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 wow. Yeah. It, you don't hear that story very often. No. The details, in detail. Maybe, yeah. maybe Sephardim are just like, we okay, we don't do, do, do. You know? Yeah. It's like, uh, we're like never forget, and you're like, yeah, eh, sometimes. I think forget. Let's just cook. <laughs> yeah. We're here. Yeah. Uh, no. Did you grow up with the story, or like, when did you like learn about the details of it? So, right. I was gonna say my my grandmother. I think was always she always told me. I mean, what happened to the Jews in Europe is is insane. Like we mm -hmm. can't we. We have no room for our story. Oh, we took up all the bandwidth. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, but it, I feel like she felt very 
are so heartbroken to what for what happened to our brothers and sisters in Europe. Right. They never wanted to make it about them. Um, yeah, they're I like, well, I lost a suitcase. And right. you're like, I, I lost the whole family. I get it. <laughs> right. don't say, you don't want to say anything in the room. <laughs> no, but still. But, I, yeah. yeah, like all we have is a filter fish now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, already, yeah. 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 She's like, I'll eat it. <laughs> with, the say, with the carrot I don't want to say anything. I don't want to say anything. Yeah. But it's it's crazy because you, there's such a projection that goes on. Every accusation leveled, about is, leveled at Israel is exactly what happened. Like the only ethnic cleansing that took place in Israel and it's going to sound like a talking point, is in Gaza. Like, literally, in 2005, they cleansed the place of Jews, mm -hmm. ethnically. Yeah. And you hear about this, too, like the Jews kicked out of the Arab world. But, uh, I don't know, it's, it, it, do you ever get discouraged to the point where every case you can make for Israel, as we're all, we're all trying to do that in our space, which right now is content media and trying to make the case, it only reinforces the hatred for it. Because to the extent that you can make Israel, you can point out Israel's virtue, its humanitarianism, and the legitimacy of our ancestral connections to it and our persecution in the past that justifies the need for a state of Israel, it seems to make the people who hate Israel m more upset. You know, because they, they, a lot of this hostility on the left is coming at it from this progressive, strange, warped view of a progressive case against Israel. Mm -hmm. So the second you out-progressive them, so to speak, it, it just it creates a cognitive dissonance that I don't know if it... I don't know how effective it is. There's a part of me that just wants to say, post October 7th, if you still think what you think and you don't know where the good and the evil is in this, then I have nothing to say to you. You know, do you ever feel that way? I, I understand this feeling mm -hmm. fully. Like, I'm just, I mean, I, and, I, and a lot of my friends feel mm -hmm. it too. I feel like for, since I've been doing this work, um, my focus was to do just that, mm -hmm. um, to out-progressive them, because mm -hmm. our story is the progressive story, and, and we are actually, Israel is a story of justice, of indigenous people um, claiming their land back. It's mm -hmm. the most successful land back project in mm -hmm. history, um, and we have the right to be there. And, w I mean, while I don't think we're oppressed in the sense that, I mean, we are kind of oppressed, mm -hmm. a lot of oppressed um, in the Middle East, but... Um, but I think there is a way to convince some people, and I think some people that are looking at it understand. But remember that a lot of people in the last few months have supported Hamas, a terrorist, mm -hmm. rapist, pedophiles that have done horrific things. So for them to come out and say, well, maybe I was wrong the last few months because everything Israel said is true, uh, is very hard. And there, there's a big propaganda campaign that was built and, and really architected. In the way that, in a way that people would not be able to even refute that. I mean, when we want to say Hamas commits genocide, mm -hmm. they already said that we are committing genocide. When we want to say ethnic cleansing, they already say it. Um, when we want to speak about the, I mean, almost most of the area around the Gaza Strip has been cleared from Jew from Israelis. They mm -hmm. all have to mi migrate to to the central uh, of Israel. Their mm -hmm. homes have been destroyed. Everything was destroyed for them and they already made this case about the Palestinians so we feel almost like I mean that's that's why it's so brilliant and evil because they want to silence us mm -hmm. I think we can't let them do that and I know that some of our stories do come across to some people are you looking for a delicious fun and easy dinner something that the entire family will be obsessed with well we are excited to announce a brand new partnership with chutzpah dumplings Michael I gotta tell you, I made these dumplings for my family and they devoured them in five minutes. Delicious. They're 100% plant-based. They have nine grams of protein per serving. They take less than 10 minutes to make. You can fry them, boil them, steam them. You put the flame on. You just wait for them to float to the top if you don't have any sort of timer. You could do that. I love when that happens. <laughs> Their first flavor, Bubby's Dumplings, reminds me of a Shabbos brisket. You can order them right now at eatchutzpah.com where they will be delivered frozen. Go to eatchutzpah.com and use the promo code Ami's House for 15% off. A-M-I-S-H-O-U-S-E. Eatchutzpah.com. Enjoy. Yeah, so what do, you, what do you think is effective? Um, could, yeah. No, because I think you do a great job. Um, like, do, yeah, what, do you have like some kind of process or strategy that you go through to make like create these effective arguments? Yeah, I, I, I get that, I get asked that a lot uh, from people on how do you really choose what messaging and mm -hmm. how co what content to put out there. I think it's my experience um, for mm -hmm. the last however many years. I think it's because I've been. I lived in London, um, very progressive um, friend circle of friends. Most of them are not our friends anymore. Mm. Uh, after this last few months, I mean, people that knew that I mean, I'm I'm a walking Israeli flag. How did mm. you not know that I was pro-Israel? I mean, it's mm. ridiculous. But you know, my my partner's friends that have been his friends for over 20 years have um, been just awful. One of them You've turned. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, one of them is, is she's from Eastern Europe, Eastern Europe, and. 
I posted on my private account to my friends. I said, you know, if you are from Eastern Europe and you are posting about Palestine nonstop and didn't say a word about mm-hmm. Jews, I hope your parents were, your grandparents were uh, righteous among the nation because if not, you're, an, you're a grandchild of a Nazi. Sorry, mm-hmm. but you are. I mean, Eastern Europe is uh, probably mm-hmm. far worse violence against Jews than, than even Germany. Mm-hmm. And for you to now use this guilt that you have because you kill, your grandparents killed Jews and didn't help us and didn't save us, to use it to save Hamas, people that are calling for the same things your ancestors have been partic- participating in, complicit in, um, and then one. So this, and they were like, "Thanks for pointing that out. I'll think about it." <laughs> but actually, <laughs> she yes. was. Yeah, it did work. <laughs> yeah, it kind of worked. Yeah. She uh-huh. she went to my partner and she said, "Well, you know, I've, I've thought about it. He has a point." Uh, and he said, "Yeah, he has a point." And you haven't called us to. He check has a point. Pappy was a Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and she said, and he asked her, like, "You haven't called us once in the last two months to ask how we are." And she said, "Yeah, I know. I I don't know why why I didn't think about it." And if, if, if there was a bomb in your city, uh, wouldn't you be the first call that I'll make before mm-hmm. posting Palestinian flags and fucking watermelons on your uh, Yeah, I'd call Instagram? you and get some perspective. Yeah. Even they didn't even check in with people they actually knew. Nothing, they because just... the, the campaign of dehumanization is so brilliant that people mm-hmm. don't see us as human. They yeah. don't see us outside of this conflict. Not only Israelis, they don't see Jews outside of this conflict. And that's why you, you have to have in those Palestinian marches, Jewish Voice for Peace. Why do you have to have yeah. a sign that you're Jewish? It's because it's anti-Semitic, and you know it. So like, otherwise, protection. you wouldn't have right, right, right. right. You wouldn't hold a Jewish flag there. Do, uh, do, Jewish. Um, do you think that's connected at all to like the Ashkenazi campaign to never forget to to be like for the last seventy five years saying the Holocaust happened, the Holocaust happened. Look at all these pictures of dead Jews mm. and all these awful things that happened to dead Jews. Do you think that's contributed at all to the dehumanization of Jews? Yeah, of, of of Jews. I mean, maybe this, this like, maybe this is kind of like uh, controversial, but mm. like Jews. Uh, projecting that that um weakness the, yeah yeah you know, that well that um i can't find the word right now Desa- that, 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 that that image of being killed mm. and like i mean like holocaust imagery is everywhere like do you think they propagated oh that? you think it backfires like it's yeah, an I'm overexposure to our suffering that. it makes people actually less sensitive right, as to opposed it? to the Sephardi community who decided mm-hmm. like we're going to focus on now and, and our strength okay. the ashkenazi okay. community focuses very i think on the past and on how we've been killed yeah, so you think there's a self-defeating effect to overexposing our? our I wonder. Suffering. I'm just asking. Yeah, yeah, I wonder. Yeah, that's the bringing question. it up. Yeah. I don't know. Like it's the, yeah, yeah, right. It, what do you think? Yeah, no, I'm not <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. I think. I mean, I think it would have happened anyway. Yeah. I mean, I look at the black community, and they're, they're speaking about slavery, and mm-hmm. they and they are acting on remembering it, and I don't think it desensitized um, a lot of mm-hmm. so many people to the idea of racism. You've said before. no, no, no. I, I'm saying it. I, I actually think the black that like that has made me or I think that has dehumanized the black community a little mm. bit. It like it's like, well, yeah, that's what happens to black people in America. You're mm. you're you're slaves here a little bit. You were and like you you know, like that's you're sa- I feel like there's a person here. You're saying people just get used to the reality and the reality is Oh, this is what happens to Jews. Yeah, and Jews, to the yeah, apathetic yeah, yeah. people out there, maybe just showing them and exposing them to atrocity over and over again, you're saying might have not have the effect we want. I wonder, I wonder that. I'm wondering yeah, yeah. that, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting. I mean, I, I do. He used to be a Klansman, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, All American. We're, we're working. On, no, but I mean, I never thought about it that way. But does it have an effect of people? I guess also like, do people just get fatigued? There's, we, we lose allyship with a lot of people who are just like, you're still talking about this? And I guess there's, I don't know if there's any other choice. The other choice is to, I don't know if there's a sweet spot, but I don't know. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah they, they don't say it about the Palestinians. Right. They never say, oh, you're still talking about Gaza? Mm. Come on. Mm. Like, they, they're not saying, oh, you s- <laughs> another picture Come of on. a baby or a child. Yeah. They're, they're still very open for it. And they have been for a long time. Um, so I, I don't know if it's desensitized. I, I do think that there is that we could have done a better job as a community to educate about the atrocities that happened to us and um, and not just make it as a museum of, you know, look at this behind mm-hmm. the glass. Mm-hmm. Um, understand yeah. that we are alive. We are living human beings. We have, you know, it's it's not just a historical thing. It's, it's a mm-hmm. living and breeding trauma that we have with us. But this is what we're doing with it. Um, yeah, so I think there is a need to do that. But at the end of the day, People would hate you. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, what about what, what about like 